are, what projects are you doing like for building stuff? Like, do you do, do you do projects? Yeah, so I've got, um, I made different projects. Here I've got some. So I made, uh, so I'm mostly focusing on uh, liquid fueled rockets. Mm, okay. And uh, right now, I, I decided that there might be a material better than plastic to make uh, rocket engines. So right now, I'm working on building a furnace. A furnace? Yes. Okay, like out of, are you going to build it out of steel or what's your plan for that? So I ha I'm making it out of clay. Out of so clay? Like, okay. Yeah, so like prehistoric furnaces. Mm. <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> I, are you going to try and turn that furnace into a combustion chamber or something? No, I, I think like, uh, so clay has this problem that you can't really do something really precise with it. It breaks easily. It's fragile. Mm -hmm. And uh, also if it gets, if you, if it gets exposed to water, it's not going to end very well. So I think that I will make uh, the uh, rockets out of, like aluminum or some other metal. Okay, okay. Usually they, uh, the, like the little small rockets, they build the nozzle out of clay. So it can be, it can usually be pretty good for uh, like high temperatures and stuff. As you said, as long as it doesn't get wet. I, I made once, I once made the solid rocket engines and I always made the nozzles out of clay. Yeah. And um, there was like this weird thing that happened with all of the hot gas. What happened is because I used powdered clay, like the powder went away and then it became um, right. you know, like the thing, flower pots, the old ones are made of. Mm -hmm. And it made like a foam of that because like all of the gases went with the clay. Interesting. Yeah. But it has to be dry, otherwise it cracks. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, no, I was just asking, where do you get to do all this? Um, like, do you have your own lab, a tiny place? Yeah, I've got this room here. Cool. It's not very big, but... Do you, you have, like, do you have, like, some machines that you can use to, uh, like, you know, work with the clay and... So, I have a hot glue gun and some scissors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yes. I've got some sand. I've got some sandpaper. I've got some sandpaper. Okay. All right. This, these yeah. are these are the weapons of a <laughs> of a startup uh, rocket rocketeer for oh. sure. Oh, okay. Well, if it, I've got a three D printer. Ah, see, there you yeah, go. You have some cool tools. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even have a three D printer. <laughs> yeah, me neither. And um, how do you manage your uh, multiple projects? It's sort of easy because, like, when you do something with clay, it needs a couple of days to uh, dry, so you can do whatever you want in the meantime. Oh, so, cool. like, uh, so for example, yeah, I got this. So, uh, for example, in the furnace, while the, the clay was drying, I made this fan for it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. It's um, the importance of cardboard in my things. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually cool. hard. It's actually hard to find like good cardboard. We're actually looking for some good cardboard right now because we're going to, uh, for the first scale model of the of the of the propulsion system, we're gonna fill the. We're gonna basically cast the grain, the uh, paraffin wax grain, in a cardboard tube, and then uh, that that'll be like the container that it'll be inside of. I would warn you that cardboard has a tendency to absorb some stuff. So I think you're going to have a little trouble taking the cardboard off. So we're not, we're, we're not going to take the cardboard off. It's going to be one piece at the end. Oh, and, then, okay. and then it's going to be, uh, it's going to be put inside of our combustion chamber. And then the, the walls of the combustion chamber are going to be what hold it all together. And there'll be an insulation layer as well. It'll be a cork insulation layer. Oh. Yeah, the cardboard is just there to like. Yeah, like a skeleton. Yeah, it doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> I guess it will burn. It will, yes, it will. So, like, I don't know, maybe one kilonewton of frost will be generated from cardboard. 
<laughs> if we get some extra thrust, that's great. <laughs> yeah, the story of uh, waiting for things to be done while you do another task actually is not very different from my life because when I try to, um, so I work on FPGA hardware design, it, it takes so long for it to just all the net listing and the routing and then finally for it to run on the board. I also just go and have a coffee in between. So I, I, I definitely get the idea of being efficient while something is working to just do something else. Um, so what manual skills can someone learn from uh, joining a team? Uh, but we have some that are coming up really soon. So we're going to make we're, we're going to make our uh, combustion chamber uh, casing out of carbon fiber. And uh, to do that, we have to wrap the carbon fiber onto basically like a tube. And this is kind of like a technical process on how you how you do this. Um, so we are going to learn how to do that. And we're going to have lots of hands-on learning with uh, designing a, a tank structure like that. We also plan to build the oxidizer tank with that same technique of wrapping uh, a composite overwrap uh, pressure vessel. Um, we're going to get lots of hands-on experience with casting uh, paraffin wax propulsion grains. This is actually something that's more difficult than it seems at first, because it seems like, okay, you just, you know, melt some wax, you know, pour it in a tube and then put a hole in it, no problem. But paraffin wax has a bunch of weird properties. When it gets hot, it gets all... Uh, like when it's when it's in the combustion chamber and it's burning, it it'll get uh, it'll lose like structural integrity as it gets hot, and it'll also the the heat will kind of go through it, so you end up it'll end up slipping off of the wall of whatever you cast it to, which means it'll just kind of like sag and end up going out of your nozzle as like solid paraffin wax, which is no good. So we have to add a bunch of like uh, we have to add a, a bunch of additives in there to make the grain more stiff and also to modify the regression rate properties and the thermal properties that it has. So getting that right is kind of tricky and is very specific to whatever your propulsion system is. And you kind of have to play around with that. And that's also going to evolve lots of trial and error. Yeah, manual skills. We're also going to get lots of shop skills, I guess, because building all of these things takes a lot of experience just working with basic tools. You, obviously, we're going to use a 3D printer a lot to build a lot of the stuff that's in our nose cone. We're going to be using uh, a lot of CNC milling. A lot of our structural components are aluminum. Uh, in the recovery bay and in the avionics bay, we are going to be CNC milling those, a lot of those parts ourselves. We also have two companies that are CNC milling the more specific parts, uh, specifically the bulkheads for our the, the big structure. Those are like really big pieces that are like 250 millimeters in diameter and you know up to 300 millimeters tall. And you can't really do that unless you have a professional CNC mill that's like 100,000 euros. So we have a, a company that we're going to, and they're kind of walking us through the process of how you're supposed to design your part in order to actually allow the, uh, the mill to actually manufacture it. That has definitely been a learning process because like you think it's like obvious, like, okay, you just, you know, submit your 3D design to them and they manufacture it perfectly as you thought in your mind. But there's like a drill bit that's going in and actually making all of those cuts and stuff. And there's a whole bunch of extra things you have to think about because there's actually a physical part that's going in and doing all this cutting and stuff. And there's some things that you designed that are actually physically impossible to make. So, you know, thinking about that's also something we're learning how to do. <laughs> We've gone like back and forth with the, with the machinists over the last month, like five times with different designs going back and forth. And they keep telling us, no, that's not possible. Try again. <laughs> Yeah, um, maybe they don't quite count as manual, but still they're essential skills. Um, I can speak for the avionics and electronics uh, aspects. Um, people have all worked on different yeah, experiments in their lab or school projects, but interfacing with real life problems, interfacing with other departments of the rocket. So this is a basic skill I think everybody had an idea of, but kind of optimized after coming to the team, where how can I make sure that my avionics does the job that the recovery needs? How can I make sure that um, my sensor really interfaces well with this other structural aspect? So I think one skill for sure is the aspect of um, building uh, printed circuit boards, interfacing different sensors together, 
um, ensuring that um, everything that you do fits with the mass budget, the power budget, and all the restrictions probably the launch site will place um, on your rocket for how it should be. So these are definitely also some skills that people kind of had, but really got a better hold of after coming to the team because what's you you know better than us that you need practical projects to actually pick up these skills instead of just school. Yeah. And also one other point I will add is you also have to be a bit creative with um, how you test things as well. Uh, so with, in, in regards to creating your own tools, I, I would also add creating your own test beds because um, you can uh, you can save a lot of time and energy by designing a really smart test that tests the thing that you need to really look for. Um, so for instance, we we are worried about the recovery bay and the avionics bay surviving the G loads when the parachute opens up. Um, so we've decided to create this test bed where we're basically going to drop like a, a big weight that's attached to the whole frame of the avionics bay and see if it survives. <laughs> and so we've we've built this like really like, you know, we just went to the hardware store, bought some wood and stuff for like 50 euros or whatever, and hammered and nailed together this contraption that will basically do this test for us at a discount at a discount rate. <laughs> and you'll you'll probably see about that on our channel in a in a in a in a month or two, because it hopefully has some good results or maybe some exciting ones where the whole frame disintegrates. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>